Let's head live to the All Pro Capital broadcast booth. Alongside Hans Olsen, here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Let's pause 10 seconds for a station identification on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Radio on KBYU FM HD2 Provo. You're listening to BYU Football on BYU Radio. BYU Football brought to you by Delta, official airline of the Brigham Young University football team. Down to Mitchell Jurgens, a field level. Mitch. Yeah, Greg, a quick update on the playing conditions here. It's a cold night, but I don't think the weather, the temperature is going to you know, bring the most problems for uh, for the players on the field today. The, the field, the grass is incredibly wet uh, from the dew. On that last Iowa State drive, you saw the running back make a cutback, and Max Tooley completely lost his footing uh, that led to one of the big gains uh, from that uh, Iowa State offense. And so these defensive players especially have to break down. It's, a, it's, it's really hard. I mean, I'm, I'm standing on the grass right now, and it's, it's slick. Uh, you can feel it. And so these players have to have a really good center of gravity, uh, you know, because if, if they're also getting too... Um, over their toes or just not having that center of gravity. It could lead to some potentially some injuries or, or just some big plays like that if they lose their footing. So um, uh, something to watch here. But, uh, yeah, the grass is incredibly wet. It hasn't been raining, so I think it's just the dew from the cold. Mitch, thank you. Mitch in the Zions Bank end zone for 150 years of helping you succeed. Zions Bank is for you in just one quarter of play. BYU ran for 88 yards. That's the most rushing yards in any half this season and we're only one quarter in in that first quarter Iowa State was outrushed by BYU 88 to 62 Iowa State out past BYU 42 yards to 5 so 104 to 93 is the first quarter yardage tally and by the way 17 points scored by Iowa State that's the most by a BYU opponent in a first quarter this year and Iowa State's not known as a juggernaut necessarily, but they're up 17-7. BYU driving, though, as we come into quarter number two, play number one, first and ten from the BYU 45-yard line. Empty for Retzloff, a quick sidearm gun underneath, and it's dropped. That appeared to be a catchable pass for Keelan Marion. It falls incomplete. That was sidearm slung pretty quickly, but Keelan, I thought, had a good beat on it, and it drops incomplete. Keelan's got to secure that catch. These receivers really need to pick up their effort for Jake Retzloff right now. He's doing everything he can, and they've got to return the favor. They can't have those drops. There were too many of them last week against West Virginia. Don't start that trend rolling right now. Second down 10. BYU 45. Ball far hash. BYU right to left as we see it, and you hear it in quarter number two. Retzloff slips on the exchange, but he got the handoff to Miles Davis, who runs for just a yard. So third down and nine, and you wonder more about the L.J. Martin situation. We've heard he'd be available for two straight weeks. Did not see him last week, and they've used three backs. None of them named L.J. Martin tonight, so he must not feel quite right as the injury cavalcade continues for BYU with some pretty important positions. They go empty again. Retzloff on a third down and nine. You see empty here. You think quarterback draw. We'll see what the Kooks proceed to do. They're going to bring Davis back into the backfield and set him up on the right hip now of Retzloff. Twins left, twins right. Ball between the hash marks. Third down and nine. Snap Retzloff, and it is a keeper by Jake, and he is yanked back after a gain of only two. And BYU will have a decision to make on a fourth down and seven near midfield. The offense not making a move off the field. They're going to be in four down territory, it would appear. Aaron Roderick says, we got to go. we got to keep him. Oh, no, he doesn't. He says, we're going to punt it away. Look for a moment that that was going to be go time near midfield. And the fans thought that was going to be the case, too. They mumble and grumble as the punt team comes on. So at the 48-yard line, after only a gain of a couple, the way that play was run, that felt like that was a couple plays. And the fans see the replay. Jake Retzlaff was yanked back by the face mask on the replay and no call as Rico punts away. Hammers it high, and it will get into the end zone for a touchback. And barely so. So out to the 20-yard line, first and 10. First, the fans were uptight about the call to not go for it. Then they were much more uptight when they saw the replay as Jake Retzlaff had his head yanked back by the face mask. And that limited to only the two-yard game. But I was saying, Hans, it felt like because of the play, that might have been Aaron saying, we've got two yard, two plays to get nine. And they did not decide that to be the case. Even near midfield, they punted away. And we'll see if that decision pays off for BYU defensively. Well, there are two quarterback draws that they've run have led to big hits and potentially dangerous area for Jake Retzloff. The last thing you want to do, Greg, is lose him in this game. You do not want to go to that third string quarterback and see really what this depth is because Jake is the one guy I think that can really carry you 
to a win today. So keep it cool. Now, that face mask was as blatant and out in the open as it possibly could be. How would the officials miss that? Power pistol. Sanders the tailback. There's an F back. There's a sprint right. And Sanders fell down. And a flag flies as Beck takes a late hit. Now the fans are really into this. And going back to what Mitch said, that's a, that's a, that's a receiving target slipping and falling in the right flat. Sanders has blew a tire. And we'll get the call here from Henry Johns. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Number 92 in the defense. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. So a chain mover via the penalty for Iowa State. 17-7 Cyclones, 90 seconds in to quarter number two here at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Now, tough luck for BYU on the call as it had been blown up on a fall down by the intended target, Eli Sanders, falling in the right flat. Tyler Batty got up under Rocco Beck's shoulder pads and pushed him late. I mean, shouldn't have done it. He knew it. He knew it was too close. And a draw handoff for a loss of one middle. Jackson Cravens the tackle of Eli Sanders. So Sanders stopped and dropped for minus one. They'll bring in Cartavius Norton at tailback and set up a second 11 for the Cyclones. 13.05 to play until halftime. And it's Iowa State with a 10-point lead, 17-7. to seven. Ball far hash. Cyclones going left to right. We're at the 34-yard line of ISU. Becht in shotgun. Norton, right hip. Twins to the right with a tight end. Single tight left, the short side. Sprint right to the open, Jalen Null. Null makes the catch, then drives the helmet forward to the sideline for a gain of maybe three. Give him four to the 39-yard line. It'll be third down and six for Iowa State. Iowa State tonight, one for three on third downs. Crew Wakely has been on spot all night long. He had a big tackle to get... Iowa State off the field earlier, and there was some nice support right there because Jacob Robinson went low, and he was getting driven back, and Wakely ended up pushing that thing down. Third down distances, third and six, third and 19, third and four, and now third and five. Play clock under 10, audible for Becht as he backs up into the gun. He's got Norton to his right hip, receives a snap, a three-step, a pump, a fire, a catch across midfield to the 45. It's Jalen No again. He's his favorite target for a lot of good reasons, sure-handed, and moves the sticks for the Cyclones. Thom Pachon's going to drop out of the middle linebacking position, and he's going to be right there to make that interception if he's just a little bit deeper. BYU shows a press man, but they fall off uh, soft zone. Cyclones go snap. tempo, Cyclones go tempo, and a first down and 10 incompletion thrown on the deep slant to Benjamin Bramer. It'll go to second down and 10. That was a no-huddle snap for Iowa State. 45-yard line of BYU. Second down and 10. 11.40 to play till halftime. Cyclone 17, Cougars 7. Now a brief pause as Beck will look at the wristband on his left arm and get ready to call the next play. Norton will stay the tailback off his left hip. Tight end, two wides, right side, short side. Single wide to the left They'll shift to Twins left and right. The handoff. Off tackle right to Norton. And that'll be a minimal gain, a couple. So a third down and eight coming up. And maybe Matt Campbell is thinking this is two plays to gain eight. As they're now inside the BYU 45-yard line. From the 43, third down and eight. With 11.20 to play till the break. I really like the run support that you're getting from Crew Wakely, but it's a really good job for David Latu. David Latu's kind of dogging out the gap. He's just using that big body to dog it out. Crew Wakely again, where he needs to be, helping bring down the tackle. Fourth tailback to see a snap. Carson Hansen joins Becht in the backfield. The white clad Cyclones stop, pause, look to the sideline, not going to get it off. The play clock at one, and they got timeout before the delay of game flag would be thrown. First charge, timeout of the quarter. Iowa State, media timeout. We'll take the break. 10.53 to play till halftime. Iowa State facing a third down and eight at the BYU 43. Cyclone 17, Cougars 7 on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. BYU in the Big 12 plays here. On the new skin, BYU Sports Network. BYU football and BYU athletics thanking NutraCost. Tonight's game sponsor, the official supplement provider of BYU athletics, is NutraCost. Greg Grubel and Hans Olsen in our broadcast booth. 
Iowa State with the football and facing a third down and eight from the BYU 43 as we come back in. Iowa State has run for 63 yards on 13 carries and a touchdown, five yards pop. What are you seeing out of how BYU is defending that Iowa State run game, Hans? Well, first of all, you know, this is an Iowa State team that gets 118 yards a game throughout the season so far. So they're way over their average. But I have seen some really solid adjustments on the outside. Early in this game, you saw Iowa State getting to the outsides, getting the big yardage. What they've done is they've opened up their bat defensive backs a little bit, so they've put their linebackers a little bit wider, and Crew Wakeley is now playing at about a 14, 15-yard depth instead of that 17-yard depth, and he's coming up and really helping in run support. Have you seen Talon Alfrey out there yet tonight? Have, have you noticed have not him? seen him okay. yet, no. Yeah. We were told he would be cleared for tonight in one way or another. Carson Hansen's the tailback on a third down and eight. Becht in the gun. Hansen will block as Becht has an opening to the right. Can he run for the first down? He will get close and does dive head first for the line to gain. He got there on third and eight, a gain of nine. Had he gone feet first, he's short, but he dives head first. That's a gamer. That's Rocco Becht moving the sticks for Iowa State. One of the biggest no-nos on a third down as a defensive end is giving up contain. Can't do it. Once you get to the depth of the quarterback, you've got to stop and you've got to hold the integrity of the edge. You've got to force Rocco Beck back inside to where you got that support so they can come out and make that tackle. Tight end and trips left. All the strength is left, the wide side, the left side for Beck in the gun. Norton now the tailback. First and 10 Cyclones at the BYU 34. A pump, a go, an end zone target, and incomplete. And that was all kinds of messed up from an Iowa State perspective. Threw into three BYU defensive backs with only two white shirts in the neighborhood. And Beck is fortunate that wasn't anything other than an incompletion. And it is incomplete on first and ten. I just love how Crew Wakely is playing tonight. That's Crew Wakely on man coverage. He's running step for step with Benjamin Bramer, who is a big body. He's 6'7", 240 pounds. And Crew Wakely is just right in position to make sure that thing's not complete. Ball near hash mark. Second and 10, BYU 34, Becht shotgun. It's a give middle for nothing. Maybe a yard for Cartavius Norton. Another third and long coming up for Iowa State. BYU's doing a nice job forcing Iowa State into third and less than manageable tonight. Again, solid on the outside. And that's everybody showing good edge support. Now, in order to show good edge support, those interior gaps have to be shut down as well. And right now, Mahe's doing a good job. Latu's doing a good job. Cravens is doing a good job of filing down those inside gaps. Cyclones are three of five on third downs. Trips to the left. Ball between the hash marks. Iowa State moving it left to right here in quarter number two. 17-7 visitors. Third and ten at the BYU 34. They vacate. It's empty for Beck. Pressure in. The screen set up. It's caught. Bramer the tight end. The catch. And Bramer the first down. Back-to-back third down conversions. Third down nine conversion. Third and ten conversion. Bramer on the tight end screen. The screen's just decimated Kansas. Iowa State was in that Kansas game based off of their ability to run screens. It's interesting how they do it from the 20 to the 20. You don't see it a lot in that 30 to 25 range, but man, they're so efficient at it. The offensive line's really good at blocking downfield. First and 10 Cyclones, BYU 23-yard line. The hand clap, the shotgun snap, the slant complete, and the catch made by Higgins, and Higgins near another first down, give him 11, move the sticks to the 11-yard line, a gain of 12 on the spot. And an Iowa State player down, back behind the play. Can't see a jersey number yet. That could be the right guard, Brendan Black. And Black's been a revelation for Iowa State. A freshman playing at the right guard spot. They're banged up there. They need this guy to stay healthy, and he's down for the moment. This would be a big loss for Iowa State. Brendan Black is down, and timeout is on the field. 8.20 to play. We're almost halfway through. Quarter number two, it is Iowa State 17 and BYU 7. And the Cyclones are back in the red zone where they are perfect tonight. Three for three tonight and 22 for 22 in Big 12 play on the year in the red zone. They've got a first and 10 at the BYU 11 right after this on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. 
You're listening to BYU Football on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Here's Jason Shepard with a scoreboard update. Some of the later Big 12 games have now gone final. Cincinnati finally gets its first Big 12 win. They defeat Houston in Houston, 24-14. Number 7, Texas, winning at TCU much closer than it looked like. 29-26 turns out to be the final score. And you got to mention this one earlier in the day. Just a shocker. UCF upsets number 15, Oklahoma State, 45-3. Back over to the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Thank you, Jason. As we come back in, Iowa State's back in the red zone. They've been clinical there. Perfect tonight, perfect on the year in Big 12 play. That's why they have a 17-7 lead. They may expand that lead here momentarily. And 8.20 to go till halftime, Hans. And you talked about how great Iowa State under Matt Campbell is when leading at the break. How about they've won 19 consecutive games when leading at halftime. And one of the reasons they have a 17-7 lead is how good they are on these slants on offense. Well, I need to see Eddie Heckard and Jacob Robinson start playing on the inside of those slants. Do you remember going from tech, TCU to Texas Tech? We talked to Eddie. He said that's what they worked on, staying inside on those slants. First and 10 from the BYU 11 for Iowa State. The visitors all white, the home team all black. Double tights left and right, backed in the gun. It's a handoff middle to Norton, and Norton spinning away from tacklers and into the end zone. Another Iowa State touchdown on the ground, and 23-7 is our new score with 8.02 to go until halftime. They're going to go right behind Jared Hufford. We talked about him, number 54, that left guard. He is an absolute mauler, and he's just going to hook up with Jackson Cravens, kind of cut the edge. And you see right there, Norton is very good at those quick shift cuts on the inside. He's a good running back as well, and that's just too easy. That's the BYU defense making it way too easy for this Iowa State offense. Sanders a rushing score. Norton a rushing score. 23-7. P.A.T. Contreras up and good. And he's now 24 for 24 on his P.A.T. tries on the year. We'll stay right here. An 80-yard drive we just saw. In 11 plays, 5.27 off the clock, 24-7. to BYU's down 17 here in the first half. And this is the largest deficit of the night for BYU. The Cougars trailed 10-0 before scoring. It was a 10-7 game, but back-to-back touchdowns. And hands, I said earlier, it felt like you have to answer punch-counter-punch game. And BYU did not answer. And Iowa State's not been stopped here in the first half. So BYU just has to go back to what got them to the end zone the first time. Yeah, give it to Aiden Robbins. Go hit those edges. See if Iowa State's adjusted to the edges. And then throw a couple. You know, the other thing is, Greg, you come out and you try to roll. Uh, and the very first possession you come out, you try to roll Jake Retzloff out to the edge so he can kind of boot throw to leveled or to layered routes. And then you go away from it. You haven't seen it since because he threw the interception. But the layered route was there. He just threw into the zone coverage over the top. Shackford kicking off from north to south, and Keelan Marion is going to take it out of the end zone from two yards deep, the 10, the 15, 20, 25, 30, and forced out of the sideline. The decision pays off for Marion and the Cougs, plus 10 on the kickoff return yardage to the 25. Looking to give BYU a shot in the arm as opposed to the touchback, and it counted for 10 bonus yards out to the 35-yard line. Keelan is just continuing to believe in himself that he's got the speed, and like we talked about, he, he had one that he broke last week that had to come back because of a holding call on the back side of the play that was away from the play. It shouldn't have been called, but Keelan still believes in himself. Out to the 37 on the final spot to a 37-yard return from Marion. BYU needs every bit of bonus yardage they can find, trailing 24-7, to 7.55 to play until halftime. A play fake. Deep, deep drop for Retzloff, and now space opens up. He throws on the run, and he throws short of Cody Epps. Epps was by himself downfield, but the throw never got to him. And so Jake now one for five through the air on three straight. He's only thrown five passes here in the first half. Almost halfway through quarter number two, 7.48 on the clock, as that ball dropped shy of Cody Epps. Not enough oomph to get it there. Second down 10 from the BYU 37. It's Cyclones 24. And BYU 7, BYU playing from behind and deep behind for a third straight game. Trips to the right, twins left. Oh, it's empty for Retzloff on a second and 10. Ball near hash. He'll wave Robbins back into the backfield. Send an option look to the right. A throwback screen left, and Chase Roberts slips and falls. No gain on the play. Maybe a yard, but another player, an offensive player, slipping and falling. 
Mitch Jurgens alluding to the slippery turf conditions. It goes to third down and 10. And the Cougars go back to tempo. Robbins off the left hip of Retzlaff. Now he'll stop, pause, and look to the sideline. JoJo Phillips in the formation. He scores his first BYU touchdown earlier in this game. The only score for BYU. They motion to trips. They set up. Shift to trips right. Single wide left. And Retzloff gun Robbins right hip. 7-12 to play in the, ha- in the half. And third and nine for BYU on the spot. Three-step Retzloff. Sells. Fires deep down the far sideline. And it is broken up. And no flags. They let him play down the boundary. JoJo Phillips defended by Miles Purchase. Purchase and Phillips looking up for the ball. The ball falls incomplete. May go as a PBU for Purchase. Fans wanting a flag. There was a little bit of minimal contact as the ball neared, but nothing is called as Purchase was able to leap and make a swipe on the ball as he held off Phillips with the other arm. No call, no flag. Punt team on with 6.59 to play in quarter number two. Miles Purchase is a fantastic corner 40 tackles he's got four pass deflections that probably goes down as a fifth and his hand was there a little early but these big 12 officials they just let it play Greg Rico drills this one it's caught at the one yard line bobbled into the end zone picked up by no trying to rescue it he does comes near side 20 25 30 35 yard line that could have been a disaster it ends up with a 35 yard punt return four off his season long of 39 Oh, my goodness. Jalen Noel bobbles it into the end zone, picked it up, and made a positive play out of it. Mitchell Jurgens, how do you see the field level? Yeah, going back to that uh, that third down play, that miss by Jake, uh, Cody Epps was actually the slot receiver on that play and beat his man on an inside post. So if Jake had seen that one, that could have turned out a lot different for that drive as uh, Cody completely beat his man and, and had a wide open look there. Jake didn't see it and uh, went to the wrong receiver, so unfortunate on that one. That's Mitchell Jurgens in the Zions Bank end zone. For 150 years of helping you succeed, Zions Bank is for you. Timeout on the field. 6.42 to go till halftime. Cyclones leading 24-7. to They get the ball back after this. On the new skin, BYU Sports Network. On the new skin, BYU Sports Network. BYU fans, go to BigOtires.com and make an appointment at one of 50 locally owned and operated Utah locations. Big O Tires, the team you trust. Following a 61-yard punt, that turned into a 35-yard punt return. It is Iowa State first down and 10 at its own 34-yard line. Ball near hash as the Cyclones go left to right here in quarter number two. They have a 17-point lead over BYU, 24-7. to seven. With this kind of lead and the productivity of Sanders, Norton, and Sama on the ground, they see a steady diet before halftime. Beck goes under center for one of the first times tonight. Deep handoff, Sanders, Sanders, room to the right, and forced out at the sideline after a gain of eight. Ethan Slade among the Cougars in pursuit. Second down two for ISU. What Sanders is doing is he's just letting the play form, and BYU's defense is starting to kind of collect it in the middle. They're kind of fighting towards the middle, and as the play kind of evolves and develops, it's opening gaps laterally and they're just sneaking through it second and short long two double tight and a wide to the right a fake pitch to the right counter run left by abu sama the third he will not get to the line to gain shooting in to make the tackle max Tuli. abu sama had a bead on the line to gain at the far sideline and Tuli makes a great low body tackle and sets up a third down and four for iowa state there's nothing better than seeing max Tuli look like he shot out of a cannon you think that that play is going to get to the sideline, and all of a sudden Max Tooley comes firing out of the middle and blows him up. That's why you miss Ben Bywater so much, because when you had Max and Ben that could both do that, they were really good at containing those edges. Great close by Tooley. Third down four at the Iowa State 40. Hansen. Off the right hip of Becht. Will pass protect. It's a quick out. It's a conversion. Jaden Higgins. And third down is now five for seven for Iowa State tonight. Another chain mover on third. BYU's going to bring a safety blitz. And, and look, if I'm a center, if I'm a quarterback, if I'm anybody on the field, I would have seen that, that safety blitz coming. It was starting to creep up well before the snap. So I'm sure they called it. They saw that it would be a man situation, and he just threw it to the corner. 24-7 Cyclones. They've got the lead 
They've got a clock under five minutes. They've got a ground game grinding. Power pistol, strength to the right. Power pistol. Quarterback with a running back trailing the quarterback and a full back off the quarterback's right hip. But they'll counter run to Sanders, and Sanders has a run of nine to the far sideline on a first and ten gain of nine. Second and short coming up as the Cyclones get into BYU territory. They're at the 46 of BYU, second down and one. And the Cyclones show Temple. They'll go no huddle. They're right back to the line of scrimmage. Tight end, wide receiver right. Twins left. That's a short side for Beck. Claps the hands, takes the snap, hands off Sanders. Nothing doing middle. Second and one will turn into third and two for ISU. Again, they get to third down. Iowa State center Jim Boniface is going to leave his down block too early to try to get up to the next level. And that just leaves a couple of BYU defenders right there to make that tackle. 46-yard line of BYU, third down and two. Cyclones have only missed on two of seven third down tries. They've not tried a fourth down. This may be four down territory with a 24-7 lead. Trips to the wide side, wide side. They'll motion to quads right. They'll draw Beck, and he gets a first down with no trouble. He got the line of the game without contact. And he falls ahead for four, needing two. Another third down chain mover. Six for eight are the Cyclones on third down. Beck is going to use third down defense, by the way, ranked 102nd coming into the night. BYU was allowing 43.3. The Cougs are allowing 75% on third downs tonight. 42 of BYU, Iowa State with nothing more than to grind out the whole clock and score at the end of it here in the first half. They're in pistol. Tight end and two wides to the wide side, right side. Single wide left, seeing press coverage from BYU on the edge. On the slant again, a conversion. Slant after slant, 25-24 yard line, gain of 18, another chain mover. And the Cyclones near the red zone again where they've been perfect tonight at 4 for 4 inside the 20. And in Big 12 play this year, now 23 for 23. The only perfect Big 12 team in league play in the red zone is Iowa State. The Cyclones driving again, leading big 24-7. Here we go, 235 to go till the break. Power pistol, strength right. Becht will clap it, pause it. And wait with a five-second play clock. Receive the snap. Stretch handoff left to Abu Sama. Sama cuts back to his right. Slaloming defenders and moving the chains again. A 13-yard run for Abu Sama the third. 2.15 on the clock. And it is first down at the 13 of BYU. Abu Sama is just going to use his moves to avoid and evade a couple of tackles. And you got BYU defenders just falling down flat on their face, grabbing air. Abasama, really nice run, just very shifty. And right now, BYU's defenders, they've just got to get back under their hips, break down, force him back inside, and make sure you're not grabbing air. And look at ISU use the clock. It's 145 on the game and five on the play. And Becht in the gun, Sama to his right hip. Two and one, timeout. They'll take it all the way down and call the timeout second of the half. Second, meet, second time out of the half. Iowa State, media timeout. We'll break it too. 97 seconds remain in the first half. Iowa State has dominated. They've run almost twice as many plays as BYU. It's 37 to 19 in snaps right now in Iowa State's favor. We'll take a break. We'll come back. 137 to go till halftime. Iowa State knocking on the door again. It's 24 to 7 Cyclones on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Let's head live to the All-Pro Capital broadcast booth. Alongside Hans Olsen, here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. BYU football brought to you by Fillmore Spencer, Utah Valley's favorite local law firm. Can play offense, defense, or provide a little coaching. Fillmore Spencer, attorneys at law. Solving problems and seizing opportunities for you, your family, and your business. So maybe frying pan into the fire because West Virginia, a team that beat BYU 37-7 last week, Lost in Norman today, 59-20. to And the Sooners come to Provo next Saturday. This will be the final away game the Sooners will ever play in the Big 12, and they'll do it right here in one week. Well, that'll be fun for BYU fans, and I'm sure they'll show up for that game. Regardless of what the outcome is here, seeing the Sooners in this stadium is going to be a real treat. So the Sooners on a roll scored 59 tonight. 
against the team that handled BYU last week. And the Cougars having a tough time handling Iowa State tonight. Cyclones up 24-7 and threatening. First and 10 Cyclones at the BYU 13. Power pistol left. That's a tailback trailing the QB and a full back off the QB's left hip. Power pistol. The hand clap of Becht. Takes a knee-high snap. Turns to his right and hands off to Abu Sama. Abu Sama starts right and goes left and goes for the end zone. Untouched. Weaving his way in for six. Abu Sama the third with Iowa State's third rushing touchdown of the night. This is brutal. So you got a young kid in Raider DeMuni that comes off his mission and comes back to BYU football. He's going to be on the outside support. He's right there to make a play. He's there to make a play for a tackle for a loss. But Abasami gives him a little bit of shake, and it puts him back on his heels, and he's able to beat him out to the edge. That's just a big old red check mark for Raider DeMuni. The three-headed monster mauling BYU tonight. Sanders rushing touchdown. Sama rushing touchdown. Norton rushing touchdown. And it's now 31-7. BYU down big again. And that's been a theme of recent weeks. BYU finding early and then deeper and deeper deficits. 128 to go till halftime. Can BYU find any kind of spark before the break? It felt like game on at 10-7. BYU had a disastrous start. Down 10-0 in the first five minutes. But a big drive to make it 10-7. But since then, bang, bang, bang. Three touchdown scores by Iowa State. No answers from BYU, and it's a runaway before the break. If this is a three-headed monster, it's got the neck of a dragon, and it's got a lion head, a tiger head, and a bear head. That's pretty much an unbeatable three-headed monster. If you think about it, you know, a big, strong dragon neck, three big bear heads, you know. It's a big, powerful three-headed monster, Greg. Well, I'm not sure where to look right now for the number that says BYU is going to challenge Iowa State in the second half because... It's 16 to 3 in first downs. It's 2 to 1 in plays run. It's 235 to 97 in yardage. And it's a kickoff out of bounds, which gives BYU fans something to cheer before the break, but very little to lean on right now at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. And first down BYU. I've hit the point repeatedly because it's one of the things that stands out about Iowa State is that when they get a chance to score, they don't mess it up. They just score every time they get in position to. They're now 24 for 24 in Big 12 play in the red zone. Yeah, and they're getting it a little bit too easy against BYU. I'll be honest. That defense isn't making it hard enough in the red zone. You're getting shook to the ground. You're falling flat on your face. You're missing tackles, and you're getting beat physically. It's just not a good look defensively. After two and a half games away, a snap for L.J. Martin now. Off the right hip of Retzloff. He'll go up to the right flat as Retzlaff will look right then back to the left gets spun out of a tackle and then be dropped a sack back at the 26 yard line loss of nine on the play Caleb Bacon with his third sack of the season and it'll be BYU facing a second and long they make a loss of eight on the spot so second down and 18 the possession time is 20 minutes to eight in Iowa State's favor right now 20 to nine with a minute to go before halftime clock running and BYU has three timeouts but The way things are going right now, I'm not sure they'll be used here in half number one. 55 seconds and counting before the break, and it's all Iowa State, 31-7. to A three-step for Retzloff. Looking left, taken off middle and dropped again. Loss on the play, another sack, and the fans get more and more restless. It'll be third down and 20 for BYU. Things going bad to worse on offense at the moment. And the game clock down to 35. The play clock at 30. BYU may run one more play, and that will be it for the half. Iowa State, again, just to reiterate just how good they've been. They've won their ninth, they've won 19 straight when leading at the break. And Matt Campbell's team is 40 and 5 with a halftime lead. And they've got a big one. Handoff Martin. Martin middle. And on third and 20, got 10. It'll be fourth down and 10. The game clock to 8, 7, and 6. No one stopping this clock, and no one stopped Iowa State in the first half. 31 7 is our halftime score. The biggest halftime deficit for BYU this season as TCU led BYU 31 to 8 in Fort Worth. Tonight's score is 31 to 7. So that bowl eligibility for BYU gets farther and farther away with each passing day as the Kooks cannot narrow the gap between them and their opponents. Much to do after halftime. Let's head down to Mitchell Jurgens with Kalani Sitake at the break. Mitch. Coach, tough start. 
What's your assessment of the first half? Yeah, it's bull crap. I mean, this is not uh, not us, and I don't like what we're doing, but it's all three phases. And it's tough when you get two, two uh, kickoff returns and you fumble on the dang thing. First play is an interception. I mean, it's just embarrassing football right now in all three phases. We've got to be better as coaches, better as players. We're, we're not we're not stopping the run on defense. We're not they're doing whatever they want. And so and on offense, other than that one drive, it's not not a lot happening. So uh, we gotta go make some adjustments, kinda find a way to get this game get back in this game. So can have second half, but that was embarrassing first half. Yeah, what do you want to see most from your players in the second half? Clean football. I mean, just let's play better football all together. Better technique, better pad level. Way too many missed tackles. It's not it's like there's just Miss blocks, miss tackles, miss plays, and missed assignments, and that's my job. I got to get them going. Got to get the me and the coaches got to get get these guys rolling uh, and show up better in the second half. Thanks, coach. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mitch and Kalani. Halftime recap coming your way next on the new skin BYU Sports Network. Looking for a 